Hey, Luna the Zen Witch here with yet another video on how to make a heckin' mask. The reason I'm doing another one is because I've had a couple more modifications and I think this is like the end. I think we're at the final development stage. The R&D is done and now we're swinging into production. I have been supplying these directly to a nurse who is supplying her colleagues with them. So I've got this wonderful feedback loop of what works and what's needed and I really think we've got it dialed in for now. So here we go. And the other thing is I've got a lot of people asking, you know, I've been posting pictures and people are saying, I need masks. Can, are you selling them? And the answer to that is no, I'm not selling them. Uh, my first line is the medical personnel. But now that uh, the CDC has finally said, oh, masks might help. We've been wearing them for a month already. But masks are going to help. And so getting some into the hands of the general public also in the long run is going to help the medical personnel because it's going to flatten that curve. So the commitment that I have made, I am able to, to do a, a little more than 100 per week. And three quarters of those are going directly into the hands of the medical personnel. And the rest of them are going to my family and friends and they can share them with people. And so I'm, I'm following kind of an organic route that way. So anyway, to the business. The first change that I've made is to change the pattern from 6 by 9 inches to 7 by 9. And the Deaconess Hospital pattern is what I'm using. Um, they say 6 by 9, which these are. So when you do them 7 by 9, they're going to look a little different. <coughs> Pardon me. I am uh, finishing up the stack of 6 by 9s that have already been cut, and these are going out to general public. For the nurses, um, the one's husband notice and the nurses were commenting that the six by nine the six from here to here which ends up being five and a half with the seam allowance um, are a little short if you open your mouth wide it slips down the nose so i did a couple modifications that she tried out she said seven by nine definitely works so we start with the seven by nine um, two colors of fabric the backing and the patterned and you know if you don't have contrasting fabric that doesn't matter and the marks here are two and a half inches in from each edge okay so this will be the top so the first step is we sew a seam from the end to this mark make sure you're back stitching at each end to lock that seam in this is going to be the busiest place of the mask with a filter going in and out of this pocket which will be formed so you want those seams to be locked in um, and there you go so after you sew those take it over to your iron and iron that seam open and get it as open and flat as you can because that's going to give you a crisp edge at the top and neatness counts for me even though I am a pirate but neatness counts so you're going to do uh, flatten that out trying to keep the seam allowances at the pocket opening there the same size as the edges where it's sewn back to the machine you're going to stitch a straight stitch an eighth of an inch in from both um, from the the seam edge there and then before i was doing two passes now i'm only doing one i am taking my uh, stitch length down to one and sewing one seam over let me get it to pop in for you if i can see here one pass over of zigzag making sure i catch that raw edge if i miss that raw edge somehow i will go back over it because you want that raw edge covered um, so it doesn't fray and come apart now as far as locking these in with back stitching yes you can do that i'm not too worried about it because when you sew these ends are going to be enclosed in a seam allowance that's going to be top stitched twice so those ends are not going anywhere so i'm not as concerned with that then on the right side of the fabric and this is where um, a big modification comes in this is grow grain ribbon and i am cutting it in two inch lengths I have also used twill tape that was an inch wide and that worked as well. It was a little thicker. The grow grain is the workhorse of costuming <laughs> and it, it really saves a lot of things. It adds a lot of sturdiness. Grow grain ribbon is 
awesome. This is quarter inch. No, this is half inch. And um, you cut it in two inch lengths, loop it back on itself, and line up the raw edges with the raw edge of the fabric. Then you're going to lay your elastic on top of that. The elastic is seven inches, right? So lay the elastic on top of that, and I am tacking it in with just a regular stitch length back and forth. If you don't tack it in, then this is going to wiggle and walk back and forth. And I tried it, um, you know, being a pirate and just holding it in place, too much of a pain. So I am tacking those in and getting all the thread off. <laughs> So it's going to look like this on both sides. Um, up here, since this is already enclosed in a seam, I'm just doing it an eighth of an inch from the seam line. Down here, I'm doing like three-eighths of an inch from the bottom so that when you do your quarter-inch seam, you're missing it. You're missing, you know, you're sewing right next to it. So um, bare quarter-inch seam allowance. I forgot to tell you that. So that is the edge of your presser foot. If the raw edge of your fabric is right at the edge of your presser foot, it's a quarter inch seam allowance. That gives me the, you know, the most amount of um, length this way, this way that I can get. So again, right sides together. And if you, if you don't sew a lot, you know, people are going, why do you want this coming to the inside? Because this is the outside of the garment. Not garment. This is the outside of the piece. So the elastic is going to be on the outside of the piece when you're done sewing, not the inside. Then you're going to fold this over and make sure that, you know, it's folded right on the seam line there. And, you know, this side. And then again, a bare quarter inch seam allowance down the side. Turn the corner with your needle down, quarter inch, same thing here, right? And then you end up with this. This is all sewn. You don't need to go back and forth and reinforce this corner because, again, once it's turned, it's going to get top stitched over twice. That is not going anywhere. So what you do from this point is you want to clip your corners so that you get a good turn. Here, where this seam, and I am back stitching on this, right here where this seam is, you're going to clip just to the side of that stitching. And you're cutting out a, a big chunk of that, um, what is it, three layers of grow grain and elastic. So that is those clipped. Down these bottom ones, you want to clip 45 degrees. Come on. There we go. 45 degrees right outside the stitching. Okay. Then we turn. And you can grab a hold of the elastic. Sure you can. And just sort of pull it and it'll pop those little ears out. So pull on the grow grain and it pulls your corners out nicely. And you're ready for the next step. Take it to your ironing board and what I do is push the seam this way a little bit and iron this part flat so that we end up with a crisp seam edge. And it matters to me because if you just press it over this way, sometimes the seam goes in on itself. And what you're doing is losing length here. And you want as much length as you can have. So flatten that out and then roll it back and press it flat this way. Press and steam. Then it is time to do um, the pleats. And you may notice these are the first pins you're seeing. That's some part of being a pirate. I fucking hate pins. But I will pin where it's necessary. I will pin the shit out of something to get it to sew right. So the way I'm doing this once this is pressed is I'm going two inches down from the top, fold this over, and then back up on itself so that the overlap is about half an inch. 
Okay, that gets this to clear. You know, you want the, the top of it not to be folded against anything. So we press that. Then on the bottom, go an inch from the bottom, fold that part over, and back up on itself. You want it so that you only have two layers together at any one time, like this. See, whoops, what the hell? See how it's staggered? What you don't want is something like this, where you're sewing over, uh, that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight layers of fabric. No, no. Make it so you're only doing four layers at any one time. So then I'm pinning to hold all of those in place. I'm pinning through this part twice to, to hold those in place and this part twice to hold those in place. Then the stitching goes from the pocket opening here. I start here and I go back and forth and back and forth. Drop your needle, turn the corner, stitch a quarter inch so the, the edge of your presser foot is right here. Stitch here till you're a quarter an inch from there, drop your needle and pivot, quarter inch seam allowance down here. This is where you've got to be a little bit of a pirate because you might have to shove that through. Your feed dogs might need a little bit of help. The first way through, you should have both sets of feed dogs helping. When you do the second top stitch, you're, you're really going to have to shove and pull. So, you know, give it a bit of a help to push it through past those layers, making sure that they're not walking open like this. Okay. Then again, drop your needle at the bottom a quarter of an inch, go across here, up this side, over here, stop at the pocket opening, and then go back and forth, and then you're done. Because again, this is going to be the most vulnerable place as they're putting filters in and out of this pocket, so you want that reinforced. This... Um, is another variation, and I will show you what the top stitching looks like with this one, um, even though, whoops, I, I goofed it up a little bit there. All right, not enough to worry about for me. Of course, I forgot to show you this bit, so here we go. Here's finished top stitching. You do that quarter inch all the way around, and then go back and do an eighth of an inch all the way around. So the quarter inch top stitching start here where you reinforce that pocket. Start here, stitch. You see the quarter inch going all the way around and back to the pocket. Then do the same thing with the eighth inch. Start here and go all the way around. These are going to be the tough parts because here's where you're sewing, I said eight layers of fabric, it's actually 16 because this blue is this outer layer and the layer that's in the seam allowance. So that's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve layers of fabric that you're sewing through. And only half of your feed dogs are going to be active. So when I start sewing around this way, I'm pushing and then I'm grabbing onto this and pulling it through. This is true pirate sewing. You just got to jam the sucker through there. So there is the two rows of top stitching. Back to our previously scheduled program. But this is a variation if you can't find elastic. These are um, t-shirt loops that you can find in a craft store. Bags full of them. The difference is when you're sewing in... Um, when you're sewing in this step, rather than tacking something down, you are just inserting the t-shirt loop into here. Fold it over there and then tack it. And um, it gets a little tricky when you start sewing the seams because this is shorter than the elastic and it's going to be pulling against you. It's kind of like um, as you're sewing you know, if this were shorter, you've got this and you're sewing a straight seam and you got to stretch the elastic as you're sewing and it gets tricky. So this one's a little bit trickier, but you can do it. And this way too, somebody that needs longer can use the loops like this. Somebody with a smaller face like a child can use the loops like this. They can also be um, 
cut and tied on and used as ties. I mean, there are a lot of different ways that those can work. But again, if you don't have elastic, all is not lost. And if you don't even have these loops, people can use shoelaces and thread them through. You can use bias tape. There's all kinds of things that can be threaded through here and used as ties and, and anchored um, in any number of ways. There's a thread's going to drive me crazy. So again, um, my modus right now um, is to sew for my community to keep things going local. Um, I will also tell you protocols once these are done. They go into the washing machine. They go with my um, wonderful homemade laundry detergent, which is made from soap and soda ash and borax. And if you look on my channel, you will see a pretty shitty video on how to make that. But, you know, it's instructions. So they go into the wash, hot water, and all fabric, when, the, when I get it, People are donating fabric. As soon as the fabric comes into the house, it goes straight into the washer. It's washed in hot water and dried in the dryer, which pre-shrinks everything. So then you know once the masks are made and they're washed, they're not going to change anymore. So when the masks are made, they go into the machine, washed again on hot. And, and actually, I'm washing them on warm cold because our warm water is super hot. <laughs> and then into the dryer. They are removed from the dryer by someone with a mask and gloves on and they go straight into a clean Ziploc bag where they can be flattened out a little bit through the plastic and they're delivered that way. Um, I've had people offer to do the washing for me, but the protocols that I'm following, the fewer hands they pass through, the better. Uh, I also have people from all over the place asking me to make masks for them, but I'm only one person and I can only do so much. So this video is to help you sew. You can do this. These are basic, basic sewing skills, straight seams. You can do this. Um, reach out to your community on Facebook and see if people have fabric to donate. As soon as I put out the call, I got shit tons of fabric. And uh, somebody that donated a, a spool of 144 yards of elastic, and that same person has donated spools of grow grain ribbon. So, um, you know, there, there are people that can't sew that want to help and want to support you. And when you get things sewn, if you know somebody working in the medical community that can help distribute for them, make a connection. It, what feels really good to me is knowing that my work is going directly from my hands into somebody's hands that's immediately going to use them. Now, there's probably a couple day lag because when they receive them, they have to go through the washing at their end according to their facilities protocols. So, you know, there, there's still a couple days lag, but um, it feels better doing that than giving them to a big distribution center where I don't know how long it's going to take them to get to their destination and I don't know where they're going. And um, But there's also nothing wrong with that. Getting them done is getting them done, and they're all going to go to some place that they can help. If you don't know anybody in the medical field, sew for your friends and and your neighbors. And, you know, I've got people that are quietly asking me for some, and I'll say, here's how many I have to offer, and here's what it's going to cost in shipping, and they shoot me shipping. And if you want to shoot me a donation or a tip as well, I gratefully receive it to support my work. Um, but I'm, but that's not going to stop me. You know, if, if somebody is in desperate need and doesn't have anything to donate, they get masks. If I have them to offer again, my limit is how many I can make per week. And three quarters of that goes to the medical community. So those are the decisions I've made. You make decisions based on what makes sense to you and what works the best for you and your community. But please, if you have the wherewithal and you have a machine and you have the basic skills, just do it. You don't have to make 100 a week. I've sewn professionally for years. I can work fast when I get going. That doesn't mean whatever you can do is not helpful. Anything that you can do is a help. And I have to tell you, and I'm going to get for clumped. I have to tell you how huge it is not to be feeling helpless right now. Not to be feeling helpless, to be feeling that there's something I can do that is directly and immediately impacting some people's safety and their lives, their very lives. 
And in a time when we are all feeling so helpless, it counts. So if you can't sew and you know somebody who is sewing and you can help them in any way, I've had a friend that has just straight up given me money. Here, I, I support what you're doing, PayPaling me 50 bucks. It's amazing. So if you can donate resources, if you've got, you know, if you can't sew because you have arthritis now, but you've got elastic and ribbon and fabric, find somebody that's sewing and donate to them. Um, follow protocols, wash things, get it into plastic, you know, just be as safe as you can possibly be with it. But support somebody who is sewing. Again, the need is great and the need is immediate. So if this has helped you and if you sew and you need some pointers, if you're struggling with something and you're trying to do this and you've got questions, ask me. I will Skype with you. I will PM you. I will answer your questions. I will give you all the help I can possibly give you to support what you're doing because me doing this makes my work grow exponentially. Me offering the help to you makes it bigger than me doing one mask at a time. So I, I'm here to help everybody. And I hope that you're staying safe and following, you know, whether your state has given a stay at home order or not, stay the fuck at home. My sister-in-law said that every park they're driving past lately um, is packed because people are like, oh, we can still go to the parks and they're going to the parks in droves. Can you please just not? Please keep yourself safe and don't endanger anybody else. And, you know, that's my plea. And I also have to tell you, being the witch that I am, um, I am doing not magic while I'm sewing. I am meditating. I've got my happy music on and meditations on. And, uh, you know, I'm listening to a lot of different things. But as I'm sewing, I am nodding in protection and help and blessings for everybody that's out there. And it's all, it's us. We're all out there, y'all. We're all in this. So um, again, I give you my blessings for protection, for um, ways to help so that you don't feel helpless and so that you can feel um, that you're part of, of the community of help that's going out. Anyway, I love you guys. Please ask me if you have questions. I'm, it, it would be great to connect and, you know, to, to help you help others. How many times can I say the word help? I don't know. Help. <laughs> Love ya. Blessed be. This is the Zen Witch.